guys, it is time for a brand new exclusive Collider interview. And I am very excited about this one because you guys might know, not this year, but the year before, I was lucky enough to host the Impulse panel at San Diego Comic-Con. And it was a dream come true because one, it's a good show. That was a bucket list item for me. And also the cast was a pleasure. Like the star of the show, Maddie Hassan. Hi, hi. That was a really good intro. <laughs> I loved it. Were you beaming that I entire was the time whole too? Time. Especially when you go, hey guys, I was like What everybody didn't see before is there was a minor mishap, but you were smiling the entire the time, time and I felt it. I I'm felt so it. proud of you. Thank you. I wouldn't be able to do that. The only person that says that to me after these shows is my mom. Yeah. So it's nice to have that support coming from another place. Me and now your mom. Too. Give me your yeah. mom's number. We'll talk at the end she, of this. My mom would love impulse. Would I she? really I no, yeah. My mom is very into just like anything How entertainment. Old is your mom? My, my my mom might not want me to say her name. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like she would You're get like, really... Mom, sorry. I feel no, like she might it. get mad got if it. I said that. But got it. my mom is very in tune with all pop culture, movies and right. shows. And I feel like something like this is right up her alley because it's super entertaining. It's got a whole lot of depth and seriously, a freaking fantastic lead performance. I can't applaud you enough. I mean, wasn't it amazing? <laughs> what if I was like, yeah, what? But it really, no. it, it really is. The reason why I asked why, how, how old your mom is, is I'm getting like a lot of men in their like 30s, 30 to 40 range that like love the show. That to me sounds like it could be the jumper movie. The audience. Doug of it, the Doug Lyman. That's of it. All. it. Yeah. That's actually an interesting thing. And also, I know, it's it, like the nature when of I first, having a show on YouTube too. Right. Maybe. But before I thought about that, I was like, "What? What?" I was like, "This is not." And then I was like, "This is really great because it." I mean, you guys need to know about this yeah, stuff I, about a teenage girl's experience and you know the whole. And quality content yeah. should appeal to everybody. To Maybe not everyone. super young viewers for this, but yeah. but when you're of a certain age, yeah. it's, it's Listen, a good way to spend your time. It's censored this season. Well, one there's one censored version this season, so there's less. I think I noticed that. I, know. I watched one episode, there's, and I think it was very confusing. It was censoring some of the curse words, yeah. and it just caught me by surprise. I know. But I fine. I prefer the uncensored version. Not that I'm like sitting and watching myself wow. 24 hours a day. Um, <laughs> But I, I would rather people see it the Do way you it was watch meant your own to stuff? be. No, I've seen okay. the first episode of both seasons, but I haven't seen the rest. I would, I would be like the, I've seen the trailers and the, you know, but I, I'm too critical, I think. I wonder, cause like I think about that a lot when we do our shows, I don't yeah. like to review something unless yeah. I've said something that I need to, you I know. I can't imagine what- Add to. Well, also I feel the same way about interviews. I'm like, I can't watch that. I'm so, why would <laughs> I makes, ever say that? If it makes you feel better, I won't rewatch this, but I'll share it with everybody. Yes. <laughs> and I feel Everyone's like, going to see it. And it's like, now you've joined the bang club. So I get know. ready to be overly critical of your hair, even though looking it looks in the, phenomenal right now. So, but, but we were talking before, I'm looking in the video thing. They're too long right now. I'm working on a movie <laughs> and I've been off for like two weeks and I'm not allowed to cut <gasps> them on my own. So I've been you, waiting. You've been working with James Wan, haven't you? I know. He's one of my favorite Is human he? beings in this industry. What a delight. Have you, you've met him? I was actually, I was, I've met him a couple of times, but one of my favorite things is I was on the set of The Conjuring, the first Conjuring, oh. when it, it must have been like 2012 or something. Yeah. And it's just, it's wild watching was him work. the first Conjuring before he was like a big yeah, mega deal? Saw came before that. So he already right. had, so he already had. Saw and some okay. other projects. So he had a name, but The Conjuring was like a genre game changer recently. He's so lovely. He is. He's such a lovely man. Do I dare ask you if you're allowed to tell us anything about your role oh in that God, movie? at all do you I'm do not. do you like uh horror and stuff like that does any of that bother you on set no not on set because it, it it's like demystified yeah. you know what i mean um but watching it before i like journeyed into this thing i was like oh and then like weeks leading up to the project i was like i guess i should get into horror so mm -hmm. i watched a bunch of stuff and it's you know i've sort of desensitized Okay. Times. It's kind of like lessened for you, the fear factor. Yeah, but I'm still a baby. What I did can't you watch? sleep after. I don't remember. What did I watch? I watched The Shining. Ooh, yeah, that's a must. I wa Right, I watched some of the must. I watched, the, what is the one where the girl gets raped by a tree? Oh, it's Evil Dead. 
What the okay, hell? Wait, wait. Did you watch the first Evil Dead and no other Evil Deads? I watched a very old version and I was like, why did nobody, because a friend recommended it. And he was like, this is a great movie. And then it happened and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I was like, oh my God, it's happening for real. <laughs> and there was like a branch that just gently cups her breast. They like tried to make this rape scene sexy. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? I'm not allowed to swear, am I? You can but swear here. I, I was fine. like, what the fuck's going on? What's happening here? <laughs> so you should probably go and also watch Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness, which are so different from the first okay. Evil Dead. But then the tree rapey scene gets even more horrific in the 2013 remake. But is it, I, what I, cause I didn't like, obviously, when was the first one made? Like the 60s 80? or something? 80s? 1980, I Oh, think? 80s. Um, it, they I really- I just be thinking about The Shining. I think that's The Shining's day too. They try to something make it like sexy. That. Close enough. You know what I mean? And yeah. I was like, this sucks a little. <laughs> so if it's not sexy in the later, ver if it's like a real, you know what I mean, portrayal. It's, I, it's dark. Okay. It's some dark stuff in I'll, that new then one. Then I'll dive in. Why okay. not? Okay. What else am I going to do with my time? <laughs> you have lots to do with your time. You're very busy right now. Cause that's not even the only upcoming movie you have. What's the one that you just had that played at Fantastic Fest? Oh, we summon the darkness. Cause your your co cast in that makes me very happy. We're big we're big fans of Alexander Daddario me here, too. and I love Amy because Channel Zero is one of my fit. There's good genre material for you, but is her it? season in Channel Zero, season two, No End House, is excellent. She's amazing. She really is such a good actress. I was supposed to do a movie with her but it ended up not working out, but she, I mean, she's, I think she's incredible. I was yeah. supposed to do another one with her and I was like, oh damn. Scheduling. There's still, still many, many more opportunities. I know, I, I hope like so. I just think the world of her and Alexander, I, th I think they're both. I can't wait incredible. to see that one. It's so fun. I can, I love, I watched that movie twice and I was like, ah. Oh. The second time I was like, I hate myself. But the first time I was in a safer space. It sounds like a good time. I have a feeling yeah. based on the descriptions and some of what I've heard from folks who are at Fantastic Fest that it's gonna be right up my alley. Yeah. I'm pumped. I think you'll love so it. So I wanna make sure some of our viewers out there get to know you a little. So mm. I wanted to go back to the very beginning. I love asking people, what was the movie or the TV show that made you say to yourself, like, that's the industry I belong in. I have to do what I just saw. I think I watched Girl Interrupted and I loved Angelina Jolie so much. I, I won, I think I had like a big crush on her. I was like, oh my God, what is that? And I was like awakened, um, part of me was. And then part of it, I was just like, wow, that's so cool to just dive into being that, you know, fucked up and, and, and emotionally complicated. And um, that being, I just, I found that to be like a really attractive character. And then I had this class in high school called Films of the 90s. It was like an elective. And we just watched all of these different cool movies from the 90s. And it really, I think, made me think, wow, this is what I really, I wanna do. I feel like I could teach that class. Yeah, shout out to Benedict Fancy. <laughs> My error right there. Yeah. So you see that movie, you say to yourself, I wanna be in this industry. Yeah. I'm curious, how did you picture yourself as an actor at that point in your life and how much has it differed in terms of what you've accomplished so far? Like, was there a specific type of movie that made you say, like, I'd be perfect for that genre? Ah, oh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm doing like what I, I don't know. I don't know, that's such a hard question. I just have always wanted to like do something that made me feel really uncomfortable. You know what I mean? I would, I just wanna like do, after this I wanna do something like really hardcore, you know? And something that people are gonna be like, oh, why did you do that? Like I've always been attracted to that kind of feeling. Cause I'm, in my life, I'm very much like a control freak and I'm, I'm you know, 24, I'm already married. Like I'm by the book all the way. There was like a year in my, when I was like 18, 18 to 19, 20, I was like, <laughs> and then it ended. Um, but I don't know, I just like, I like the challenge, I think. So another thing that I like to ask with the beginning of the career, because I think this is one of the most difficult things to achieve, because I imagine when you're first starting out, you kind of want to say yes to everything. You want to get yeah. the screen time, but you also want to carve the appropriate path and right. pick the projects that are most meaningful and really speak to you. How do you kind of find that balance between wanting to get the gigs, but also making sure you curate your filmography? Well, when I was first, it's interesting that you should say that because when I was first starting out, I really, I started out when I was 16 
and I re- well, 15, I started auditioning and then 16, I really like got the ball rolling. Um, I really didn't want to do Disney Channel. Not to shit on Disney Channel, they're great and they've created like really successful careers mm-hmm. and great shows and obviously amazing movies. But just for me, I was like, that's not me. Like, that's not what I want to do. I want to do, um, you know, stuff that is um, less conventional, less um, stuff that'll make me feel uncomfortable, that'll mm-hmm. make audiences feel uncomfortable. Um, and my manager was like, please, <laughs> you're 16. One, you've never done a movie. You cannot make these kind of, like, you need to go out for everything. And I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And then I went out for it eventually because I was like, okay, of course I need to do it. And I need to, like, you know, um, be less full of myself. <laughs> and then I went and they were like, we don't get her. And then I was like, I was right. They don't get me. Like, I don't get, you know what I mean? Most of the time, I think when I've felt like this isn't for me, I'm not for them. Mm. which is lucky. And then mm. there's sometimes where you're like, that's for me. And then it's just not. So they're like, this is for somebody. Because you've gone you. on to get some <laughs> wonderful things. Is there any particular audition that was, that was super tough to not get? Like you thought you nailed it and it oh just didn't God. work out for whatever reason? So many. So how, many. How do you overcome something like that? Because everyone out there deals with some degree of failure, career in life, anything at all. Yeah. So it always helps to hear how somebody else gets past it. Oh, I mean, I think uh, it gets easier the more that it happens because it, like 80% of this is rejection. It's just rejection filled. So you get used to it, I think. But um, I think you have to have a little bit of perspective. Like it's a job at the end of the day. It's not, I mean, it doesn't feel that way to me. I'm like, this is my career, <laughs> my life. <laughs> Um, I know how that feels. But you have to have things that are more important to you. And I think the older that I've gotten, you know, like um, building more of a home base here and getting married and having a, a, a I don't want to say rich social life because that sounds dick, but I a can't think of system. a support system. Thank you. It makes you feel like, oh, well, that's just this thing. Hmm. And that's not all of the pieces of my pie. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is important to have that. That's yeah. why I'm that's why I'm happy I have that mentality about my career here at Collider when like other people in the room right now are that support system. When we yeah. all like beat each other, beat ourselves up over things. Yeah. It's like we can always turn to each other and everybody gets it and yes. they're there to help us out. Sarah and I, Sarah Desjardins yes, yes. on on the show, we both are very like at the end of scenes, we're like, oh my God, I screwed that up and I did this and I really thought I could have done this and I thought I could have just, you know, been more of this and, you know, just we go back and forth with our insecurities and I feel like I have that Mm. with her because she's like, no, you're incredible and I'm always like, obviously you're incredible and you didn't need to do any of that and you don't have a good view of yourself. (laughs) So it's, you know, a little codependent, but it helps. It's no, I think it's a good codependency. I, think it's good I mean, too. it's it's a necessity to have that kind of support around you yeah. at all times because I feel like it's just in our nature as human beings to you know pick on ourselves. I know, and we're all very like wrapped up in our own experience of ourselves, not even like of what's happening of ourselves and how other people are viewing us. And once you realize that everyone is doing the same thing that you're doing. You like, uh, well, you'd think it would shatter it more than it does. Then you just go right back to thinking, oh, what? what's wrong with me? You know what I mean? I feel like I have that inner monologue with myself all, all the, the time. time. All the time. But what's then you, wrong you, with us? But then you come out you of come it. You come out of it. Like, you dip back in. Yeah. You come out of it. Yeah. The only person or the, the only thing that ever hears that inner monologue is my poor cat. But then he looks at me like I'm the light of his life. And I'm like, yeah. no, see, you believe in me. So What's I can go name? out and do everything. Dewey, as in Deputy Dewey from Scream. Please tell me you've seen Scream. I haven't seen Scream. I've seen Scary Movie, which had a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually even more curious what you would think of Scream, having <laughs> seen the parody of Scream first. Yeah. That needs to go to the top of your list. Do you know I saw, so I will watch it, because I my friend did a Drew Barrymore costume um, Daniel Maslany's wife did a Drew Barrymore c- costume um, for Halloween, and I was like, that's so cool, and it really made me want to watch it. Okay, good. 
Um, but Scary Movie, I watched as a child. It was like Scary Movie 3, I don't know, but it terrified me. That's always what happens when you're a kid. It's like the first horror movie I ever saw isn't really a horror movie, it's a horror comedy. It's Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And now I love what it and have a lot of- What is that? <laughs> There's another one to put on the list. It's absolutely delightful. It it's only beautiful. a matter of time before they remake that movie. Yeah. It's crazy, it's kooky. I can't yeah. get enough of it. Award winning. <laughs> we have to talk about Impulse a little. Okay. <laughs> so I don't want to spoil anything for anybody out there who hasn't actually watched the show, but just to give everybody a little bit of a gist, because a lot of our viewership I think is very familiar with Jumper. So it right. kind of takes a cue from that. Were you aware of Jumper the movie when the script first came your way? And did you have any assumptions about doing a YouTube show in particular? Oh, that's a tricky question, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Um, well, YouTube wasn't, you know, what it is now. They're more established in the streaming, the uh, scripted content mm -hmm. streaming field now. But then I didn't know about any of their stuff. So I was like, um, what? I was like, I don't know about that. And then I saw Doug Lyman obviously is attached to it. And I knew about Jumper before. I loved the Jumper movie. I know that some people, critics, I don't think, loved it as much, but I loved it. I feel like, what was that? And like the mixed zone. Yeah. Also Doug didn't love it, which is why he ended up doing this. Um, but I thought it was really fun. Hayden Christensen, oh my God. I had such fun. a crush on him as a child. <laughs> this is a safe office to say that in. <laughs> uh, but I really loved the script, which is what it came down to. Mm -hmm. I thought Henry was so cool and weird and interesting. Is it intimidating at all reading, especially the beginnings of her journey? Because, yeah. you know, Jumper is essentially a movie where a character kind of has a superpower and yeah. that comes with like a glorification and a certain assumption about what that kind of story is. And right. Henry, in order to find out she has that power, goes through a traumatizing thing. Well, you know what's interesting is when I first got the pilot, it, the assault was very, um, it, it wasn't, we reshot it. So once our showrunner, Lauren LaFranc, came on, um, she watched the pilot, we, we shot the whole pilot, and it, it, she was like, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna run this show, if I'm gonna write for it, this assault is gonna stay with her for the rest of, her life and it you need to make a bigger moment of it it needs mm. to be shot from her perspective and uh, so that we can properly move forward in her uh, hero's journey um so that was all her um so when i got that news i was like "Ooh, it is a bit of a wait because you're like i really i want to do that right that's a serious thing um yeah that is that it's quite a bit to have on your shoulders yeah, but it was good. I, I met with a, a, a therapist who um, meets with victims mm -hmm. of assault and I spoke to her at length and I spoke to some people in my own life who have been assaulted and I tried to get as much inside, you know, what that's like as I could. And it's a really meaningful representation of what it is like for her to carry that throughout the show. So right. for folks out there, I'm midway through season two and the callbacks to it there are extremely powerful. Are they? I can't remember what oh, happened. There's, <laughs> season there's two. Quite, right where I'm at now is, is like, I view it as a little bit of a make or break moment that could be on the horizon for the character. She's about to do something very important and I can't wait to get to what that is. I, you know what's funny is I can't remember anything that's happened. It's very hard for me to, I like black out. I, I do it and then I like have no idea what happened. I have to go back and review and try to remember. I can, I can imagine doing something like that, especially because whether it's that moment or many other things Henry goes through, like this just seems like a very demanding role to me, whether, whether it's all of that or just, I don't know, there's something about Henry that looks like she's always like super tense and super stressed. Do you, do you feel that when yeah. you're playing her? Yeah, she like, sure you're, is. You're it's so a real smiley bummer. and relaxed. <laughs> I don't know why I just, I mean, this must be a thing with people who are in shows and movies. Like I just assume like you were gonna have that expression on that all the time. That I was gonna look like her. Exact opposite. Or that girl. Like a little bit like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, listen, I, you know, Henry is 16 and she, has been assaulted, doesn't know how to deal with that, is dealing with it mostly on her own, has this crazy superpower, which is fucking wild if you think about it. 
um, she can't find her father, who she has this deep love and obsession with, and she thinks if I find him, he's going to solve all my problems. You know what I mean? I, of course she's the way that she is, you know? And she's also very on her own a lot. And her two friends that she that she does have become her friends by circumstance. Like, they're thrown together, and they're not her friend because they saw her and were like, she's great. You know what I mean? They were like, she's a bummer it's to be a, around. She's kind of an asshole. It's like a very real representation about what would happen if people like that come yeah. together. Because my movie and TV brain looks at the three of you and at all times I'm like, no, be the exact support system that you all need in I this know. given moment. Yeah. And there, you know, there's personality conflicts there. You guys are all delightful though. I it's like them. the chemistry in ones, that yeah. little friendship circle always makes me super happy. <sighs> Good There's, luck. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Oh. I'm going to get there eventually. The other chemistry in the show that I think is an absolute standout is between you and Missy. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of assumptions out there in terms of Missy's work. You look and you say, oh, like, I don't know, like dodgeball, comedy. Oh, right. Her performance in this is so, so good. And you two play off each other so well where there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of dark stuff brewing and some troubling moments, but it's almost like the two of you can like flip a switch in a heartbeat and go into like this, like mother daughter slash friend kind of banter that I get yeah. caught up in so easily. It just seems like you guys have, I don't know, the best working relationship in the world to me. We genuinely really do. I mean, it's the most chemistry I've ever had with a person. And I, they didn't do a chemistry read. They didn't cast us based off of, they just got very lucky, I think. We got really lucky. Um, but that's, I mean, that's exactly how I feel about her. I feel really connected to her. And the, um, the first scene in between us and in, in season two where we're in the car and mm -hmm. she's bleeding and I'm not giving anything away because it's in the previews. Um, when I was sitting and when I was getting emotional, I didn't have to, cause sometimes you've, you've got to draw on some stuff from your own life. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I felt when I was close to her, I was like, oh my God, I feel like she is my real mom. And I wasn't, you know, crying about anything other than her being hurt. Because I really do feel, I love her so much. I feel like that thought would make rewatching that sequence even more crushing now. It's do it. Like, a, like it. A, one, a one, two punch. I probably will. So with all of this, what do you do when you go home at the end of a day of tough shooting to kind of like recharge or, I don't know, kind of give yourself a little boost? Do you know what I've been doing this past season? I watched uh, The Real Housewives. Okay. I like to really shut my mind off in a way that like is maybe a bit extreme because my husband came out to Toronto with me. Shoot, we shoot in Toronto. We live here in LA. Um, and he came out both seasons and both seasons. He was like, Hey, are you in there at all? Like I, it was no connection at all. Cause I just, I would go, I would throw myself into work and I would come home and I would just like totally shut down. Mm -hmm. And it's real work for me to, um, pull myself out of that and uh, emotionally connect after, uh, I don't know if it's how, if it's how grueling the work is or if it's the emotional load of the show or if it's just the hours mm -hmm. or like, I mean, even being on a set, like you have to be on and social all day. And for me, I'm, I'm not a social person in that way. And so when I get home, I just shut my brain off entirely. I can really understand that mentality. I don't think I fully got it because, you know, sitting sitting and watching a show or a movie, it's like a glorification of what an actor does. And it wasn't until right. I was in film school and we had to do a course called Directing the Actor where, you know, we were all directors, but yeah. we had to direct each other. And just to feel like what it felt like to be directed and to not be able to like tap like to be physically incapable of tapping into a certain emotion and convey it. I don't know. It was like the first time I ever got super caught up in my own head and I couldn't yeah. make myself do something that yes. I could see other people do and knew it was possible, but I couldn't do it myself. And ever since then, I feel like I've just had more appreciation for the craft than anything. I feel that way a lot of the time. I'm like, how, oh, why can I not do this? And then people will be like, great. And I'll be like, you liar. <laughs> Why would you say that to me? Everyone's out to get me. And then I'm like, I understand how everybody becomes a diva. You know what I mean? Or how the word diva exists. Cause I, I think it's a very, it's like a highly emotional situation. Are there and you're any, like really trying to be this one thing and you never think you're doing it. Are right. there any scenes where it is the opposite though? Where what? you've done something and you're like, 
like I nailed that. Like you walk away feeling so, so good. I don't think I've ever been like, I nailed it. But I, I, there are moments where I've been like, I couldn't have done anything more than I just did, which is, which is, I think the most of what I'm going to get. And it, it, it does feel good. In season one, the first day, I think, we ended um, with, uh, there's, a, there's a scene where Henry like teleports back into her room and she cries on the floor by herself. And we shot that scene for a long time. And I was like sobbing for a long time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and that was the first time I'd really, really done that on a, on a project. And I was like, well, I mean, I, I genuinely cried like about my own shit for, I mean, multiple hours. And I was like, I couldn't have done anything more because I was so drained. I was like, this feels good. I have a headache. I'm dehydrated. Like I generally, I couldn't have done more than what I did, but I didn't feel like, oh, I'm amazing. You know what I mean? I wasn't like, I'm an amazing actor. I just felt like that's all I could have done in that. For what it's worth, you know. all all the exhaustion, it's it's well worth it because oh, you good. are so good in this. Thanks. Before we have to say goodbye to you, I want to do a couple collider random questions. These are truly random because I didn't write any of them down, but it's just a little get to know you thing. If you could guest star on any TV show, which one would you pick and why? Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I know it's over, but I it's my favorite show of all time. I would totally buy you in that show. Thank you, but I would. I like that. I would want to be Buffy, but I also wouldn't want to be Buffy because nobody can do it like Sarah Michelle Geller. I would maybe want to be true. Faith. Have you ever seen the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie though? Like we got two yes, Buffies. Yes, of course I they're, have. They're, <laughs> they're both great and you never know. Yeah. I feel like we you never know. A, we live in a world where re- reboots and remakes no. happen all the time. Oh, I don't want it, re- I don't want it remade. <laughs> Admittedly, no. as those words dribbled out of my mouth, I'm like, no, 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 don't touch Please that. don't do it. I think they are doing it though. I wouldn't be surprised. They, they're they're they doing are. it with everything now. Yeah. Um, do you collect anything? No, I'm like trying to think, do I collect anything? No, I don't collect anything, but I'm really weird about certain stuff. Like I have a specific type of peanut butter that I love and I don't like eating any. You're talking my language right now. What kind of peanut butter is it? It's this brand called Maranatha and it's really good. What's so special about it? (sighs) Oh, okay. So the brand is really great, but the one that I love has sugar in it. um, Okay. And it's delicious. It's the crunchy version. It's very smooth. It tastes like a dessert. Your great respect of peanut butter is making me think you might be on the same page as me. Yes. Do you eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or just peanut butter sandwiches? <sighs> just peanut butter. Yes. Are you? I was like, oh God, we're gonna <laughs> no. we're gonna go apart just, here. Just peanut just butter. Just peanut butter. The jelly, no. The jelly ruins it. Ruins the it. Ruins it. I feel and then so you much have a weird right soggy piece of bread. Exactly. I agree with you. All right. I feel like we have just set the rule. Everybody else out there is wrong. No, you're entitled yeah. to an opinion on your own. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You are not. <laughs> what is the movie you quote the most often? I don't know. I don't think I quote, I don't know if I quote a movie. Do you have an all time favorite? I can't tell which question is more difficult. It's so, yeah, I don't, I really don't have, I, and I've never come up with an answer to that question. I really don't have an all time favorite movie. What about the one you frequently watch? Like, even if it's a holiday movie, like what, I mean, Thanksgiving and Christmas are right around the corner. It's not like a, it's not like an award winning movie, but (laughs) I love it. The movie that I watch the most is The Holiday with um, Cameron Diaz, Kate Winslet. I Jack probably Black. don't watch it as much as you, so but anybody much. making assumptions out there about The Holiday should give it a watch because that movie is a joy. It's a joy. Also, how dare any of you, okay? Jude Law in that movie, can we just? I couldn't agree more. I watched that movie, I've seen it in, in an in embarrassing amount of times. I watch that a lot. And have you ever seen The Family Stone? Yes. That's another one. I love the really, family really stone. good one. I love Sarah Jessica Parker. She's so good in that. The whole family. I love that ensemble. Yeah. What is I the love background? an ensemble, a holiday yeah. ensemble. You, everybody needs that. Um, Dan in real life. Oh, Dan the, in, for whatever reason, Dan in real life is not one that's become repeat viewing for me, but I understand. I, I showed it to my husband the other night and he was like, what's going on in this movie? And I was like, what do you, what do you mean? It's Dan in real life. And he was like, why is Steve, like Steve Carell should be funny. And I was like, Steve Carell, just relax. 
I feel like wants him to always be Michael Scott. From Isn't the it office. frustrating when you love a movie and you watch it with someone and who they're just love like, much? can we not? <laughs> like it, it hurts me a little, but I think it's okay because yeah. I'm able to manage that hurt appropriately. Yes. And it's just a sign of how much I love movies. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give you two more. Okay. What is the background photo of your phone? Um, it's a picture of flowers. I love how every time I ask someone that they go to, <laughs> they go to grab their phone. Like it almost looks like, oh, I was like, it? why is it just me okay. that's doing this? <laughs> I feel so panicked. <laughs> I do. I, I mean, I do something. I walk around like tapping my pockets all the time because I'm convinced it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a little thing that's that's happened over the years. It's so bad. The last how question. How connected we are to this. I know, isn't it? So bad. But is it bad? Because I kind of like it. I know. I kinda, I'm, is it bad? Whenever someone says. <laughs> I can says, stop whenever I want. <laughs> whenever someone says I need to go away and disconnect, I'm like, I need to go away to an exotic location, but I don't need to disconnect. I just need to connect more. <laughs> A little bit. A little. <laughs> I gotta love it. Without shame. Last question for you. What is the most, I'm going two directions with this. Are you this. coming up with this on the spot? No, we, I kind of do two different things. Okay. Like what, what is like the most recent achievement that you kind of hold tight? And then what is the most, the word is escaping me right now. What is the most, when you do something randomly and you don't plan it, like asking this question right now. Oh, something. Wendy, I, what's the word? We ask this question all the time. When you don't plan something, what is the most, oh my God, brain fart. Spontaneous. spontaneous. That's not the word we always use though. It's not on the list, but spontaneous is the same effect. Spontaneous. What is the most impulsive thing? That's what the question was. Okay, so impulsive and your most recent achievement. Impulse, I get it. Oh shit. I got it I'm just so kidding. late. <laughs> so late. I'm just kidding. I really avoid doing um, that joke, but uh, <laughs> I've done it m more times than I can count. Really and it's happy not that it's it happened not funny. accidentally, but it was um, the truth all along. Uh, what's the what? Did, what was the first question? <laughs> your your most recent achievement and the most impulsive thing you've done recently. Uh, I don't know if this is an achievement, but I ha I was telling you I'm not a very social person, and I um have recently become more social and I, I'll, I'll let go out okay, and choose to see friends It's a multiple it's a times during the week. It's so easy to just sit on your couch and watch yeah. streaming stuff. I have it. one friend now that I talk to every day, which I didn't have before. I've never had like a best friend. That's so nice. Yeah. It that feels good. So happy. It feels really good. And now what's the most impulsive thing you've done recently? Maybe getting bangs. I thought you were gonna get the last. It might, person it might I be asked the that question too. Was cutting off most of her hair, and I was. I very mean, that's the by that. first place. I, it wasn't that impulsive because I did. I, now I'm playing with them a lot. I'm like, are they okay? Um, it wasn't. I I wanted to get them for a while. It wasn't like a let me get bangs. This stuff's happening, but yeah. They're fun to have. They're they fun feel to have. Great. They look great, and you can have them both ways. You can have them down. You can. Pin well, them now down. I'm like, is it's this nice. the rest of my life? Like, how am I ever not gonna have if, bang one? I love them, but two, like growing them out is such a bitch. I was I'm gonna not say gonna if the answer to that question is like you need encouragement that it's not the rest of your life. I'm not the You're right not person, the person to ask that. I to. know that. I think I'm stuck like this for the rest of my life, but I think I'm okay with it. Yeah. I it like looks bangs. good. I like bangs and I like impulse. And I think all of you should watch it on YouTube. Seasons one and season two, please catch up. Maddie, thank you so much for your time today. And again, thank huge you. congratulations on the show. Obviously, I'm a very big fan. Please do not forget to watch it. Also, like and share this interview before you leave. And we'll see you soon.